Hello, I'm going to talk today about starting spinning and this is just a beginning spinning overview. This is a Louet S10. I have the drive band on the slowest whirl. The whirl is actually part of the bobbin and you can move it to three different positions. And I always think it's better for beginners to start on the largest whirl. It'll go the slowest. It gives you a little bit more time to do what you have to do. This is the brake band. It's in the front and it goes over this bearing that's, that's part of the flyer that holds the bobbin. The thing about the brake band is that when you are first starting and the bobbin is empty, there's going to be a really strong pull from the bobbin and you don't need much of a brake band at all. In fact, you don't need any braking action at all. The braking action is what creates the pull. The, hard, the, more, the stronger the braking action, the more pull you get. You want to spin a really thick yarn, increase the braking action. So what I do is I tell my beginners just, just disconnect this from the little thing that holds it on the side. There's a, it fits right in there and it's already very loose. I also use either Valseline or a synthetic lubricant called Super Lube or you can use Ballistol right in this to keep it nice and lubricated but I'm just going to let it hang there. I have a leader. This is my leader. Oh, let's see if I can get it in the picture. There we go. There's my leader and it's just a loop of yarn so I'm going to put the leader on. I had to leave these leaders on and I put them on so that the knot end is down towards the bobbin and this is just my way of doing it. It's not the only way to do things. It's just my way. And there are two different guides that I'm going to use the right guide because I'm spinning clockwise. When I spin counterclockwise I'll use the left guide. You don't really need an orifice hook. You just shove it in there with your, little, with your pinky and pull it out. Make sure it goes along the hook. So you've got leader along the hook through the hole and out and brake band is just hanging there. This is some I recommend you use carded carded wool. Now this wool is kind of a long piece. I'm not going to use that big a piece and I don't recommend that you do either. Just tear off a small chunk. That's going to go for a long ways. It's going to last a long time. So I'll keep the other one on my knee here. This is already carded so it doesn't matter if you pull it out from the end or if you pull it out from the side. You're not going to be spinning worsted here. You won't have parallel fibers. Use carded wool before you get started. And then just get, this, get the wheel started and treadle with your foot. You'll see the flyer start moving. We need a little bit of lubrication here because she hasn't been lubed in a while. Okay, so I'm going to stop and get my loop. Okay, so all that horrible chirping was coming from the fact that this bearing, get this off of here, this bearing, this, this plastic thing is called a bearing and it sits in a brass cup right down here and it had no lubrication at all and it was just chirping like crazy. So I have this old antique sewing machine oil can and I put ballastol in it but you can use any kind of good machine like sewing machine oil. I like ballastol because it won't damage the plastic and it won't damage the leather. We got plastic and leather and I just squirted a little bit in there and chirp is gone. If you don't like the smell of ballastol just uh, people who own guns use ballastol. They're familiar with ballastol. You can always add some nice clove oil or cinnamon oil to it. It'll give it a great scent. Okay, I seem to have lost my piece so I'm going to tear off another small piece of this New Zealand wool. It's very soft actually. And again, it's already carded and I'm on the largest whirl so I'm just going to see how quiet. Now, you are going to treadle too fast. Treadle slower. I'm treadling as slow as I, I can treadle even slower than this. You won't be spinning as thin as this. You'll be spinning thicker. The idea is pull away and 
watch the twist come up into the into what you're holding and pull away from it. Some people like to spin like this where they pull out a little at a time. I find that I end up losing the single much more often. And remember there's a very positive tug even with no brake band action, even with lots of lubrication, it really does pull. And that's the nature of an S10. As the bobbin starts to fill up, it's only going to feel like this for a little while. And you're going to be spinning a little bit thicker, so you're probably not going to notice it as much as me spinning thinner. I just spin thinner automatically. I'm so used to doing this. So there's just sort of pull back a little. I can feel if I'm going to lose it, and I just tear it away and overlap it. And you're going to be fishing that single out of there many, many times. If you spin slower, if you treadle slower, you have a little bit more time to deal with what's happening in your fiber. If, it's, if you're not pulling it back fast enough, or it's, a, or you're not, or it's starting to bunch up on you, so treadle as slow as you can go and still have it work for you. I'm going to put quite a bit on here so that when you first start spinning person who's getting this is, is a, I'm actually helping her out but I'm sharing this for everyone. Now this has got a sliding hook flyer so you need to watch what's going on. You can see it directly down here and it's starting to fill up. I didn't start right at the beginning like I should. I could shove it all down here but I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And it's about the same level as the previous one. I'm just going to inch it forward a little bit. Not by much, but just enough to start winding in another place. And whether you use hooks or a sliding hook flyer, you have to watch and see what's happening as the as the fiber is filling up on the bobbin. You don't want to have these really big hills and valleys. You want it to pile up about the same amount for each little section. It started to break so I pulled it apart. You can stop treadling or slow your treadling way way down so that you can attach it. And then pull back. Now I'm spinning as a left-handed spinner. That means that I'm holding the fiber in my left hand and I'm using my right hand to hold the spin back or what we call controlling the spin that's always on here. I don't really lift it all the way off. Let me get a little bit more fiber. And Again, you just tear off a small piece. If it's too thick, you can tear it in half. So just pull it in half like this. Work with a small amount. Another thing I like to do, and you'll get used to, if, if you start doing this at the beginning, you'll get used to it much earlier, is just fold it over my index finger. And then it's just going to pull right off of there. I like this method. It's a good delivery method. And it's consistent. You don't need an orifice hook with, a, with an S10. I think I mentioned that. So I'm just, there's the draft zone right there where my forefinger is. There's my forefinger. And I just pull back every once in a while. I, I'm in constant motion, pulling back, letting it wind on, pulling back, letting it wind on. Yours will be thicker than mine, which is normal. After a while, you'll open oh, and then I need to pay attention to what's ha happening here. It's really starting to fill up here, so I need to advance it just a bit. Just push it about a quarter of an inch or so. And you'll see it'll start to fill up in another section. Boy, it really made a difference to put a little lubrication on there. It's quite, quite quiet. Very quiet. Now the good thing about this positive pull or this really yanky feeling that you'll that you have when you're spinning with this is that when you go to ply you want it to pull hard because that means that as the bobbin fills up it's still going to pull 
you're going to get good what we call take up. Take up is the pull from the from the bobbin that allows the fiber to wind on to the bobbin. That's take up. And you, you want a nice positive take up. Otherwise it's kind of hard to get your bobbin to fill up. And especially when you're plying, you want positive take up. So this is a good wheel for spinning and for plying. It takes a little bit of getting used to it first and you'll start to get into the the groove of, oh, okay, I'm, I'm not working fast enough, or I'm working too slow, or I'm working too fast, I'm not getting enough twist in. Now, I could spin like a right-handed person, and that means that I'm going to draw out with my right hand. I have to slow my spinning down because I'm not used to spinning this way. It's more like, it's just like what it'll be like for you. I'm probably going to lose it a few times. I don't have the trust with my right hand that I do with my left hand. There we go. So I'm just pulling back and holding it with my right hand, holding the fiber, keeping the twist back behind my hand. 